Hi, welcome back to Inspire DIYer. Uh, if you're here for the first time, my name is Max and I'm your host for this channel. So today we're going to be making my, uh, my chicken broth recipe. And uh, I'll be using Instant Pot for today because it's just easy and convenient. And I only use Instant Pot when I'm making chicken broth. So if I'm making pork, uh, lamb, or like beef bro uh, bone broth, I will, I will actually use my stock pot. And um, particularly for chicken as well, I always, always roast my uh, chicken bones first because roasting them and browning them ahead uh, adds a bit of extra depth and flavor into, into the broth. Whereas if I'm do doing um, like pork bone broth, I might try to do more like a clear broth where I'm just like sort of uh, boiling them over and then um, leave them like that. So I'm going to start off roasting my, uh, my chicken bones first and then I'll add in all the, the veggies later. But I'm going to be using this uh, organic chicken bones. And also this might seem kind of disgusting to you but um, I'm actually using chicken feet as well. And the reason is because uh, chicken feet has tons and tons of collagens inside and you don't want to miss out on those like collagen. Like it will really uh, boost the, the Im like to help you with all those um, you know immunity and fight all the colds and flu and improve your skins and everything like that's uh, like the whole reason why you want to drink bone broth on a daily basis and uh, you can make it a vegetarian uh, broth as well um, the reason why I, I, I okay so I actually used to be a like sort of like a vegetarian or pescatarian in the past but the reason why I sort of switched back to uh, meat basis diet is because and I don't eat, I don't consume, uh, you know, meat and all those like things every day. But the reason why I switched back is because I'm like, uh, I have a, like sort of digestive issues. And I realized that, you know, if you eat something that's collagen rich, it will really help you to, to uh, repair your guts and everything, which is the reason why I make bone broth so often. And I'm on this channel, I'm going to be showing you different variations on how I make my bone broth. So... Today is obviously going to be the chicken. I might try to do beef bone broth, pork bone broth, and I use it in tons of food that I cooked. So I will show you how I make it in um, my noodle soups and then all those different types of soup that I do. So I'm going to add a bit of olive oil. Just going to drizzle that on top and then mix them up. Just want to try to keep one hand clean so that I can... Uh, open the oven later. Okay, so I'm going to be adding a bit of um, uh, salt. You can use sea salt. I'm using Himalayan salt, and then I'm going to switch over to a different brand after this. I read that uh, this is. Uh, I actually bought it already, but I'll show you next time. Um, the Redmond's uh, pink sea salt is actually really good, and they are uh, mined in Utah, so um, it's more local to here. So less transportation, better for environment. I forgot to tell you guys that I, I actually preheated my oven to about 425 degrees. So we're going to be um, roasting them in there. I don't do uh, more than 450 degrees, which is actually my preference to do a higher temperature. But um, it leaves a bit of smoke residue like coming off um, from this oven. So I don't really like it. And then the smoke detector went on last time. So it was a nightmare. <laughs> I'm going to leave it roast in there for like 40, 40 minutes or so. Uh, you could do half an hour. Maybe I'll do half an hour and then I'll add the veggies in afterward because you I don't, I don't think you need to roast the veggie as long. So that's why I always put in the, the chicken or whatever bones you want to use first. So I'll come back to this and in a bit. Okay, so let's go over the ingredients that I'm going to be using for within the, this chicken broth. Pretty much anything you see here are actually optional. Like, as long as you really have the chicken bones, that's pretty much like the core. But yeah, you also want to add veggies in there to add it, um, give it more depth and extra flavor into it. Um, I almost always, always use garlic and onion into the broth because um, I think it gives really good flavor into it. But I'm also going to be adding today uh, some carrots. I got these organic carrots that I shopped up. I didn't even peel off the skins and we can add it straight in. Or well, we're going to be uh, roasting them. And then I'm going to be adding this um, bit of stems of uh, 
what whatever is left of the parsley I was using. I'm gonna be adding a bit of few couple of slices of ginger, and then I got this very interesting. Stuff that I'm gonna show you. Making broth is the ultimate laziness because you can use whatever veggies you have left and then uh, freeze them up ahead and then use them. Uh, so I got a mix of uh, some green onions and also some fennels. Um, these are the top of the fennels that uh, typically like uh, you would toss them away because you can't really eat them. Uh, they're very tough but it's great for adding them into the broth. because it's, It smells really good as well. So I'm just going to be cutting these up. I'm only going to be roasting um, onions and carrots here. Typically I have se uh, celery as well, but not today, so um, I would also roast it. Celery or any... Um, So I did this off camera because I realized that I forgot uh, after putting this roasting pan into the oven uh, to to uh, salt and pepper a little bit on the the veggies, but that's basically what I did. Um, just coat it with like very light oil. We're gonna be adding a bit more here, and I'm gonna I'm not putting it too much because I'm gonna be using it as a, a stock for uh, something else I'm gonna be making that I'm thought about. So here I just added enough water to cover up all the, uh, the, the veg veggies and also the chicken bones. There's no science to this, uh, you just want it to sort of push everything down and then have the water just cover all, everything over. And that's it. Um, I'm going to be adding a bit of more, a bit more salt and pepper into here. And then we're going to be putting into the instant pot. So with chicken bones, I'm going to do manual mode. And then I'm going to do, let's see, two hours, two and a half, two and a half hours. Let's do 150 minutes. So two and a half hours. Um, to simply put, um, it, if you do high pressure cooking, you can reduce the amount of time you need to make for the broth, which is why I'm using Instant Pot here. But if you're going to be cooking this on a stock pot, you might have to double or triple the amount of time. So you might actually have to do about 4-5 to five hours or even longer depending on how much bones you have and what um, your method of cooking or like roasting or boiling. Okay, we are back. So I went out for so long and then I just kept the Instant Pot on to keep warm for quite a while. but. Uh, basically, after two and a half hours um, of high pressure cooking, this is what it looks like. Can't tilt it more than this, but so I'm gonna be stirring this out into the stainless steel bowl. And then what I typically would do is give me one second. I would put them into mason jars. So another trick I want to show you is, well, not a trick, but sort of a precaution is to never put your broth all the way to the top. So you want to leave about, I would say about this much. Let's see, I'll put it up close in the camera. Refocus this real quick. So we want to put it around this much um, and no more than that because when you, when you freeze the broth, um, well first you want it, uh, this broth is still pretty hot so you want to leave it out for now until it cools down and then you want to freeze them but as you freeze these mason jars or any glass jars it will start to expand right so you want to leave this a bit of a space on the top so that it doesn't crack um, it has happened to me in the past and I've broken a, 
a few um, mason jars because I just filled them up to the top. So just remember that. That's very, very important. So I think I used about, about two pounds or so of chicken bones and feet along with um, a couple of veggies. I think I cut up a whole um, large onions and then a couple of um, maybe like two medium carrots. So about that, I can't give a perfect ratio because it really just varies on how much broth you or stocks you want to make. Yeah, I would say it makes about uh, three liters because I, I had to count the fact that I didn't fill it up all the way and then got a bit left over jar. But that's about it. It's it's really it's actually really easy to make. It's just uh, it can be time consuming depending on what equipment you have. So for me, I use instant pot. I was able to leave my home without having to worry it over boil. Um, if you use a stock pot, make sure you use a large one and then keep the heat on low if you're gonna leave your home. I, it's not recommended to do so in case it um, catches fire or anything. I'm not responsible for that, but um, uh, the larger the pot, the chance of it being over boil is, uh, is pretty slim. But um, I recommend you to try making your, your broth at home because it is way, way cheaper than a store pot. Like, I would say a pack of store-bought for these would be like $10 already. That, that's how expensive it is. Like, um, at least in the, the local butcher that I go to, even though I really like them, but... Well, all the broths and stocks are very expensive. And with that said, um, if you like the content, please subscribe. And thanks for very, very much for watching.